Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany, if you're new here. And today I wanted to kind of cover a lot of the frequently asked questions I get about travel to Greece. And I also ask some people in my community tab to ask me what their questions were. So this is sort of amalgamation of the questions that I always seem to get repeatedly and then some of the new questions that I've gotten. One of the questions I see a lot, both in my videos and then in other Greek travel forums is how do I get euros or how do much euros should I bring before I arrive in Greece? And then also, you know, how do I get money in ATM? Do I need cash? A couple of things. You can get euros before you come. Uh, your bank should be able to sell you euros. Um, if you want to just have some cash on arrival, it's not what I recommend, but I understand that not everybody's comfortable landing in a country without local currency. You can just get them from your from an ATM here in Greece. I only recommend that you use a bank ATM though. Uh, they are going to offer you the best exchange rates and the lower conversion fees, whereas if you use something like Euronet or some kind of standalone ATM, they may not give you that best conversion rate. The other thing I'm going to mention is that when you do this, it may ask you, do you want to do the conversion on the ATM or do you want it to like go back to your bank? I think it says like convert or don't convert. It doesn't ask me this, so I'm not sure um, because I don't use my American ATM card here, uh, but you wanna choose no conversion. Let your bank do the negotiation for you because they're gonna get you the best rate. Another person asks, do I need cash? Can I just use my credit card? And for the most part, yes, you can get around Greece without having to use cash. There are a few exceptions though. If you hail a taxi instead of using an app, you are gonna have to pay cash. I don't know of very many taxis that take credit cards. I've never been in one. And this may be different on the islands, but at least here in Athens, I've never encountered that. A lot of times I get, well, what's the weather like now? Or what's the weather like in October? And what's the weather like in January? The one thing I wanna mention is if you're not coming in the summer, remember that Greece does have winter. It is not a place that is just warm all the time. Um, you know, several years we've had snow in January and February and March. So Greece is not like the Caribbean. It can get cold. We do have seasons here. What I would say is look at the weather forecast, see what you're normally comfortable with because if you are from a place that is normally cold, the average temperature here might feel extremely hot to you depending on what time of year you come and vice versa. If you're from a place that's really hot and you come and it's 90 degrees or almost 30 something degrees Celsius, you're gonna go, oh, this is just normal for me. So keep that in mind. Also keep in mind, it can be very humid here. It does, you know, not so much in Athens, but in certain times of the year, especially in the rainy season, it's humid. So it's gonna feel a little bit warmer. If you come in the winter, we don't have great insulation. So your hotel may feel a little bit chillier, particularly on an island. If it's windy, it's gonna feel chilly. So I can't necessarily say, this is what the weather is like, because even though the weather may be the perfect temperature for me, it may not be for you. We all have different like expectations. Along those lines, I also get, what should I pack? Well, again, it's really gonna depend on how you comfortable you are in those different kinds of weather. Um, if you're coming any time of the summer, bring shorts, bring dresses, bring short sleeve shirts. Greece is very casual. Unless you're staying in a five-star resort where they're requiring that you get dressed up in the evening, you shouldn't need fancy dresses and long pants. Now, obviously, there's always the exception. I've even been in many far stay places and they've never asked for a fancy dress or anything like that. You may want to get dressed up. I like to go out to dinner sometimes when I'm on an island to a nicer place and I like to wear a dress, but it's totally optional. I think the biggest question I get, even though I've made a whole video on this, is how do I get from the airport to my hotel in Athens? So I will link the, the uh, video that I've made on that in the description below so you can go watch it, but there's a metro, there's a bus, and there are plenty of taxis. Uh, don't worry about that. Um, it's pretty easy. It sounds daunting, but it's not. Uh, the one thing I will say about the metro 
is that the line that goes from the airport to the center is sort of uh, known for its pickpocket problem. They target tourists, they target people who have suitcases, so be super vigilant on that ride in. Do not talk to your companions. Just be on hyper awareness. It seems to be really bad this year. Uh, so keep that in mind. And you know, when the summer ends, that sort of ends. And when the summer starts, it starts back up again. The other thing is if you're going to Piraeus and not to Athens, you can also take the Metro the whole way there and a bus. All of that is in that video. This is another question that I've made an entire video. And I also have a page on my website and I'll link to both of those below that sort of cover where you should stay in Athens. Now, there are some neighborhoods that I didn't include on this because the video would have been too long, uh, but you can kind of see it in the map. And I talk about the place not to stay, uh, so that may be more helpful for you. That's near the end of the video. Let's say you've come here and you're like, oh, I loved this hotel. I wanna do this again next year. Why is the hotel saying that it's fully booked online for next year? I don't understand. Like, I, they're open now, so why wouldn't they not be open this time next year? Well, Greek hotels tend to not plan far in advance. It's just a Greek thing. So a lot of times, the reservation system won't open anywhere from six to nine months before that. So, like, if you're trying to book in September, you may not see a hotel be open, you know, with their bookings until February. And if they're really a summer destination, they still may be on their winter holiday. So they may not open those reservations until April. Just be patient. And if you're really curious, you can email them. Although their reply will be very delayed because they are most likely not checking anything. Uh, I know this is sort of foreign to a lot of people, uh, but hotels here are very seasonal, especially on the islands, and they just take off the whole winter. Ah, the ever present question of how many islands should I visit on my holiday? Again, this really depends on how many days you're spending here. But let's say you're coming for seven to 10 days and you wanna do Athens as well. I'd say that you need to spend two or three days in Athens and then the rest of the time on one island. I don't think people realize that if you're not able to fly to your island destination, then you're gonna to have to take a ferry and that can take anywhere from two to eight hours, depending on how you're going, if you're going the fast ferry, the slow ferry, all of that. Um, so if you really are desperate to hit as many islands as you can, you really need to do some planning in advance and figure out how long of a travel day you're willing to have. Um, or you need to pick islands that are super close together so that you can hit two islands in the same place. The one thing I will say about that is a lot of times if you go to one island that's next to each other, they can feel a little bit similar. So you may not be getting that, oh, this is a very different island experience. Um, and keep in mind <laughs> that you can't fly between islands. That's actually one of the other questions that I get a lot is, can I fly from Santorini to Naxos? They both have airports, why can't you fly there? There just isn't inner island flights. There is one company that has started to do it, but it's only in a very specific area and it doesn't fly to the places every day. Um, and I doubt that they've even released their schedule for next year at this point because it, they didn't announce their schedule for this year until like a month before. So I would not count on being able to fly between islands. What time do you need to be at the ferry? <laughs> um, it's not like flying on an airplane. You don't need to be there many hours in advance. However, in my personal opinion, you need to be there 30 minutes to an hour before, depending on where you're getting this ferry from. In Athens, I would say about an hour, particularly if you don't have a seat, if you're just going economy and you need to go in and claim your seat. Someone said to me the other day, they're like, yeah, but don't you get up and walk around? I'm like, yeah, but I don't walk around with all my stuff. I dump my stuff on a chair and leave it there for the entire trip. I don't wanna be fighting for a seat. That's just me personally, but I also live here and the ferry is no longer this exciting thing that it might be when you first come. So take that with a grain of salt. Um, one question that I get asked a lot about taking the ferry too is 
how many how much baggage am I allowed to bring? Well, it'll say on your ticket you're allowed one bag that's 50 pounds or whatever that is in kgs. I think it's 23 or something. Don't worry about that. <laughs> no one is checking to see how many bags you're bringing with you. There is luggage storage down in the car deck in like 90% of the ferries that you're going to take. And trust me, you should leave your bag there. Do not take your bag up to your seat because in, I would say almost 100% of the ferries, you will have to carry it downstairs when you leave. They don't run the escalators um, on the ferries when they dock and only people who have disabilities or are mobility impaired are allowed to use the elevators. So if your bag weighs 50 kilo, 50, 50 kilos, <laughs> if your bag weighs 50 pounds, do you really want to carry it down two flights of stairs? Probably not. Uh, but don't worry, you don't have to check your bag with an agent or anything. You just show up and put your bag down and you go up and enjoy the ferry ride. One thing I get asked about a lot is taxis because not everybody obviously is going to rent a car and it's not used to taking public transportation. So one of them is, do I need to rent a car? In Athens, no, you definitely don't need to rent a car. I walk everywhere. Um, sometimes I take the metro, sometimes I take the bus. It depends on how far it is. And I live very central. I live about a 15 minute walk from the Acropolis. Um, and actually most of the tourist things that you would want to do on a two or three day trip in Athens are gonna be like within, I'd say a 15 to 20 minute walking distance. And trust me, if you have mobility issues, you're still not gonna to wanna to like rent a car because parking is a nightmare and you may end up having to park exactly where your Airbnb or your hotel is because it's no parking. So uh, I would say that if you really do need someone to take you around because you have an issue walking, then you just need to call a taxi. And another question related to that is, do you have Uber? We have Uber in Athens. We do not have Uber in most other places. Um, it does not work in Santorini. It does not work on most of the islands. I haven't been to Mykonos, so I don't know if it works there. Um, I tried it a few weeks ago. I had a friend who was out on the way to Corinth and I looked to see if I could call him an Uber to get to the train station and no, it wasn't possible. So. Um, but if you're in Athens, you can use Uber. Along those same lines, one of the questions is, how do I not get ripped off by a taxi in Greece? Now, most of this will apply only in Athens, maybe in Thessaloniki. I haven't been there, so I don't know. But in Athens, you want to use Uber if you can. Like if you are at your hotel or you are at a site you just need to use Uber because that is the best way to not be charged double once you get in that taxi. Um, if you're coming from the airport, you need to know what the flat fare is because there is a flat fare from Athens to the city center and to Piraeus and vice versa. And it depends on what time of the day you're coming. I believe right now, as of this filming in September of 2023, that the flat rate during the day is 40, maybe 41 euros and at night, and I believe it's, I'm not sure what time that starts though, the night fare is 55 euros. That should also include tolls. It does not include a tip though. So just something to keep in mind. The other thing is, is so let's say you've hailed a taxi on the street. You need to, when you get in the car, make sure they've turned on the meter. If they refuse to turn on the meter, I would either ask to be let out or you say, how much is it going to be? And if it sounds ridiculous, then it probably is. The other thing is, it's illegal for them to not turn on the meter. So they can get in big trouble. So if you get to the place where you're going and you've said to him, okay, you're not turning on the meter, how much is it? And he's giving you this wild amount of like 30 euros to go like a five minute taxi ride you know what, you're gonna get out of the taxi. And if you don't have your stuff with you, you're gonna get out of the taxi. This is key, get out of the taxi and hand him 10 euros and walk away because what he's done is illegal and he cannot call the police on you because he will get in trouble. So now I know not everyone is confident enough to do this. So this is why I say, if you get in, they won't turn on the meter, then ask to be let out because they can't keep you in the taxi. 
Someone asked me about renting a car. Are there any unusual things about driving in Greece or driving laws that they should be aware of? The one thing that I have noticed, especially here in Athens, that kind of drives me crazy is that all the traffic lights are off to the right. They are not hanging above you like they would be in a lot of other countries. They're not hanging in the middle of the intersection. They are over here to the right. And so you have to stop pretty far back so that you can like lean out the window and look to see whether the light has turned red or green or whatever. Now, on a lot of islands, there are no traffic lights or just stop signs. There are some intersections in Athens where there should be a four-way stop, but there's not. So if you decided to be brave and drive here, you need to basically slow down at every intersection and just look and make sure because there are some crazy drivers here. Like they just will go. I have gotten this question a few times in the last month or two is what is the best airline to fly to Greece from the US? I can't really tell you that because A, I don't fly them all, but also it really depends on where you're coming from. Like I live in Dallas and my best option is to fly American Airlines because it flies to London and then to Athens. There is no direct flight from Dallas to Athens. And a lot of places like Chicago and New York there is a direct flight, but only in the summer season. So it starts like at the end of April and then ends in October. And like some of them, it doesn't start until June. So what I would say is that you need to pick the airline that is most convenient for your location that offers the best price is English spoken. And if you haven't traveled a lot, then you probably are not as aware as some people. So yes, uh, English is spoken a lot here. Um, I would say even more so than like Italy or France, uh, particularly in the tourist areas. So definitely in Athens, um, in the tourist areas and on the islands. And if they don't, they will find someone that does. They will try their best to help you. Uh, I don't fear that. Um, menus are often in several different languages. Uh, so don't fear, you will not have a problem getting around here if you only speak English. This I thought was a really great question. And it is, how do you get around on an island if you don't drive? Is there public transportation? There are on a lot of the islands, there is a local bus system usually. However, not all of them have them. And some of them are not great. <laughs> So um, you just need to look and see like, am I going to this island and I'm gonna be able to get around on the bus? The other thing is if you're coming outside of the high season, so if you're coming outside of June to September, you may have an issue that the buses don't run as often. So my recommendation is if you're going to an island that doesn't have great public transportation and you don't drive, um, pick an island that you can walk, a small one, or you know, you find out what the bus schedule is right when you get there, because usually they're not online, or if they are, they may not be accurate, um, and plan your day. Like, okay, the bus is running here, here, and here on these days at these times, so today we can do this, tomorrow we can do this. Your vacation won't be as flexible maybe as you wanted it to be, but you can still get around. Obviously there are taxis on most islands. The thing is, is there usually aren't very many of them, so if there's something really special that you want to do, you may need to book that like the day before with your hotel, ask your hotel to call and say, we want a taxi at nine. And then I want the taxi to come back and pick me up at one o'clock. If you don't book that and you've gone somewhere, there may be no taxi to take you back. Obviously this is just like barely scratching the surface. And I'm sure that there are more questions that you will have when you're planning your trip to Greece. So if you do, please put those questions down in the comments below and I or one of your other fellow subscribers will get back to you with an answer. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.